What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Chris and here we explore products, places and things that help us live a more enjoyable life. Look, now that it's March, it's starting to warm up a little bit. So we're starting to put together travel plans for spring, summer and fall of this year. And I'm getting pretty stoked to travel in the van and ride in new places. So the van and traveling has very much been on my mind recently. So I'm gonna switch gears in this video. The last handful have been about bikes this time we're gonna focus on the top five must have accessories for your Sprinter 4x4, or really any van for that matter, because I think these apply to Sprinters, Ram Pro Masters, as well as Transit. This isn't just Sprinter exclusive. As always, I offer my perspective as someone who's maybe a little bit like you. I enjoy traveling. We enjoy traveling together as a family as much as possible while still holding down real world work, life, family and social obligations. And of course, no one is paying me for this video, so I'm able to speak freely about these products and tell you what I like about them without any kind of parameters or rules involved. Let's dive right into it. The first accessory I wanna talk about is one of my favorites, and it is the DTE pedal box. If you've ever driven one of these turbo diesel sprinters, there is a lot of turbo lag. And yes, I know some drivers out there may say, hey, dude, there's really no such thing as turbo lag. You're just a bad driver. Nah, maybe that's the case, but I can tell you coming from two naturally aspirated daily driver trucks, going and driving the Sprinter van stock without the pedal box is a totally different experience. Pulling out of intersections, pulling away from stop signs, there's a lot of lag before that turbo spins up. And so the pedal box helps with just that exact issue. The pedal box features four different driving modes that go from kind of least to most aggressive. And on the least aggressive side, you have stock and city, which are kind of like an eco mode. And then you have sport and sport plus, which are for more aggressive driving, if you will. Now the stock and city, you can imagine the throttle response is very slow and it feels like you're kind of driving a vehicle in like an eco mode. And then you have the Sport and Sport Plus, which made the throttle very touchy and very aggressive, but it allows you to kind of feather the gas pedal as much as needed. Now, the latter two settings of Sport and Sport Plus are not necessarily gonna turn your van into a 911, but it does give you much better response and allows you to pass uphill much better, go around cars, get out of intersections, and just it's a better overall driving experience in the latter two modes, Sport and Sport Plus. One of my big concerns when I first installed the pedal box was gas mileage. I thought that I'd see my gas mileage tank as if I was constantly just flooring it everywhere I went. And that hasn't been the case. I really have seen a minimal decrease in gas mileage since installing the pedal box. And I think the driving experience is far superior to what it is when it's just stock. You've got torque that's available all the time and there really are very, very few drawbacks. The installation is incredibly easy. You just disconnect one of the cables right above the gas pedal, and then you connect in the pedal box, reconnect everything, and then you can kind of tuck the pedal box up wherever you want it. We happen to put ours kind of right below the steering wheel and the steering column. I've seen other people that mount them kind of right by their cup holder, whatever you want. I know some people like to adjust this stuff on the fly. I can tell you that we've had it installed for probably 10,000 miles now, and I've not adjusted it one time. It always stays in kind of the sport mode, and I really, really like that it's tucked out of the way. I don't have to worry about it, and I have all the benefits of the pedal box. Retail on the pedal box is right around $300, and I believe that you can do the installation yourself, although you could take it to a dealer and they'd probably charge you a few bucks to install it. The second accessory that I think everyone should consider is an additional set of lights. Now, one of my big complaints about the VS30 is just how terrible the halogen lights are. I mean, here we are buying these $60,000 plus vans and they come with these halogen lights that are just terrible. So the solution that I found is not the lights that are on top of our van, but they're these four small lights that are mounted right by the bumper and they're the Baja Designs Squadron Pros. I have two sets on there. I have a set of ambers and I have a set of clears. The ambers are floodlights, so they allow me to kind of see around corners and in fog and in snow. And the middle clear ones are spots, so they allow me to see pretty far out into the distance. 
Last summer, we visited Yosemite National Park, and on one of the first days that we got there, we drove up to Glacier Point and watched the sunset. After the sunset, we cooked dinner, we hung out for a little bit, and as we were leaving, it occurred to me that it's absolutely pitch black. The only other people that were still left on Glacier Point were people who were out stargazing. So if you can imagine driving the Sprinter with these crappy halogen lights, it was a pretty poor experience. Flip on the floodlights and flip on the spotlights, and it completely changed the driving experience. Check this out. pretty clear just how much better these lights are than the stock halogen lights and you can understand why these would be on the must have list. Another experience that we had was when we were driving back from Wyoming in September of last year. We were driving on these back roads between Wyoming and Idaho and we came across this herd of this group of deer standing right in the middle of the road and thanks to the lights that I had on the Baja Design Squadron Pros, I was able to see the deer with plenty of time to stop. Now, had I had the halogen lights on and nothing else, I think the distance would have been pretty close and it would have been a very different situation. So again, another experience where I was very grateful to just have some brighter lights out there, especially in these dark conditions on back roads. The retail on these lights is right around 225. So for the set of four, it was around $900 and these just link right up to these small little light buttons that are down and right of the steering column. The third thing on my list originally wasn't a must have, but it was on my wife's list of must haves and it is the Webasto Airtop diesel heater. When I first saw it, I thought it was kind of a waste of money. I thought we could just bring extra blankets and camp in the van. She was right. I was wrong. The diesel heater for us has been a huge asset as we've traveled in early spring as well as winter time. When the temperatures at night drop down into the 20s, we can flip on the diesel heater and we're warm all night long. The heater mounts underneath of the passenger seat. It's kind of stored in that little box. There's a vent that comes out that blows air to the back of the van, which is great because that's where we sleep. There's an exhaust port that goes out and down below the van as well as an intake port. And then it connects underneath into the gas tank. It's all controlled by something, I think it's called the Smart Temp Control 2.0. It's just mounted up in our cabinets up top and we can control the exact temperature to whatever we want to sleep in. And it's kind of one of those set it and forget it type deals which occasionally we have to get up in the middle of the night and turn it down because it just blows really, really hot. I mean, the thing works really, really well. From an efficiency perspective, I've heard that it burns like a gallon of fuel for every 48 hours of use. I can't confirm that, but I can tell you that using it for eight or 10 hours, you know, between the time when you get into the van and you're getting ready to go to sleep, sleeping and getting up in the morning and getting ready, it burns very little fuel. In fact, I don't think I've ever noticed that it moves the needle at all on the gas gauge. Retail on the Webasto Airtop diesel heater is between $1,500 and $2,000, depending on where you find it and where you buy it. Not quite sure on install, probably another $500 to $700 to install it. It's a fairly complicated install, at least I thought that it was. Number four on the must have list is also the most expensive, and that is an upgraded suspension system. When we bought the van, we flew out to Phoenix, drove it back. The van felt great. It drove really well. Even in the wind, the thing was fantastic. That was stock. That was with no weight. As soon as you start adding the build weight, as well as gear, as well as people, the dynamic and the handling of the van completely changes. You get a little bit of sag in the back, and it's just a completely different driving experience. And so the solution that we found was the Van Compass Stage 4.3 kit. We had looked at two different kits. We looked at the Agile Rip kit, as well as the Van Compass kits. And based on the driving that we were doing, a little bit of off-roading, and what the weight of our vehicle was, we decided to go with the Van Compass Stage 4.3 kit, and it's been fantastic. One of my favorite features about the Van Compass Stage 4.3 kit is the adjustable suspension that's found on each individual shock. 
It's got three settings. Number one being the stiffest for driving on smooth roads and highways, and number three being the softest for washboard roads, really anything off-road. If you throw it in three, the dynamic of the suspension completely changes. And then you have setting number two, which is right in the middle, which is great for just everyday driving and for most trips. It's been really fun to play around with the different suspension settings based on how we're driving. If we're driving mountain roads, I'll often put it in setting number one, which is the stiffest setting. And it's incredible how little body roll you feel from a van that's over 10 feet tall. And then if we get down to the bottom of the mountain and we wanna go off-roading or we wanna find a camping spot that's kind of off the grid, we throw it into setting three, which is the softest setting, and the van just flies through washboard roads and anywhere that we want it to go, and it performs really, really well. Again, this isn't gonna take your van and turn it into a 911 in sport mode in the stiffest setting, and it's not gonna turn your van into a trophy truck in setting three, but it definitely helps with the ride quality and the handling. Retail on the Stage 4.3 kit is $3,064, plus install unless you plan to do it yourself. Now, I did the rear shocks as well as the front bump stops with the help of a friend. Thanks, Darren. And I'd say that it was fairly easy. If you're somewhat mechanically inclined, you could probably do the whole thing. I then took the van to a specific shop in San Clemente and had them do the front shocks as well as the rear leaf springs. And that's with my van at about 8,500 pounds fully loaded. If yours is lighter, you may not need the leaf springs, but for mine and for our driving style and for how much we're weighing the van down, the 4.3 kit made sense with the leaf springs, with the upgraded suspension for all four tires. Now, if you're kind of on a budget, I'd say maybe you could just do the rear shocks as well as the front bump stops and you'll still have an incredibly improved ride and you won't feel as much of the body roll side to side and you'll notice a big improvement in the way that the rear of the van drives and it doesn't seem to jump around as much as it does from a stock perspective. So that's my two cents on that kit. I think it's one of those things that you don't really realize that you need it or want it until you have it. And then a thousand miles later, you're asking yourself, wow, how did we ever live without the suspension kit? I think it's that good. Number five on my list is the least expensive item, but I believe it opens the door to the most fun, and that is a receiver. Some of your vans maybe came with one, mine didn't because I got the super ultra base model. If yours was the same, buy yourself a $230 receiver. You can install it yourself, it's incredibly easy. Not that you're necessarily gonna tow anything, but it opens the door to bike racks, to ski racks, to storage boxes, all of those fun accessories you want can be stored and put right there in that receiver. And it allows you to do more fun things and go more places with that receiver. After over 14,000 miles in the van, these are my five must-have accessories. And I think they're the five accessories that bring the most value to the experience of owning the van and traveling in the van. And also I think they add an element of safety that I don't think should be overlooked. If this video has been helpful, feel free to smash that like button, maybe hit the subscribe button if you'd like to. And until next time, see you soon.